Bellator 257 weigh in recap, full card predictions, and the betting preview. Should be a pretty fun card here. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to go over the weigh ins, talk about some bets. Maybe some picks will change, maybe they will not. Uh, but let's get into it. Make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And let's start it off with the first fight of the night. This matchup here in the featherweight division. Definitely both guys have potential to make runs here in this Bellator featherweight division. Especially Mads Burnell. He's an excellent grappler. Very good striking as well. As is Saul Rogers. Both bring very high level skill sets on the ground to the table. Now, I will say advantage in the striking department. Got to give it to Mads Brunel. He is the shorter guy by two inches and obviously will have a two inch reach disadvantage to go alongside of that. You can see them next to each other. Doesn't look substantial physique wise. Similar mass for both of them. I feel the better fighter of the two is Mads Brunel. And that's why he's the minus 190 favorite here. I like him here. He comes in on weight 146. Saul Rogers 145.8. Burnell, also the younger fighter, is on a really good win streak. Everything points towards Mads Burnell here. I think Saul is an excellent matchup for him. And I think that Mads Burnell with a win over Saul Rogers is really going to get pumping here in this Bellator featherweight division. I think he's somebody to keep an eye on. I predict he gets the victory here. I could see him doing it by submission or a unanimous decision. But the pick is Mads Burnell at the minus 190. He's a solid straight up bet or an excellent parlay addition. This should be a really fun first fight of the night. This card is absolutely stacked for a Bellator event. The full card is fantastic. Next fight of the night, Lance Gibson Jr. versus Marcus Serene. Serene's a pretty good wrestler, and we have to note he has the wrestling background that could cause problems for the young Lance Gibson Jr. Granted, Gibson Jr. been practicing martial arts since he was, I believe, two years of age. He's a lifetime practitioner. His father and stepmother were both mixed martial artists. Marcus Serene is going to be a difficult test for him, and I think it's a very good one. Serene fought against Devin Powell. Did well on the ground with him. Granted, got submitted in that fight at the very end of the second round. Lance Gibson Jr., I believe he'll be able to fend off the takedowns. But at the minus 550, skip the bet on Gibson Jr. Marcus Serene could very well surprise us all. Is an older guy at 39, but has the wrestling tools. And Gibson Jr., only three pro fights. I believe Gibson does escape with victory in this matchup, but it will not be easy. And I think Marcus Serene is a serious test for him. At minus 550... Excuse me. Those odds, not good. Not good. I don't like those odds one bit. Skip the bet on Lance Gibson Jr. That's my personal opinion for this fight here. I do think he beats Lance, or rather Marcus Serene, but Lance Gibson Jr., too many question marks. He's not at the level. And both guys make weight 155 for Gibson Jr. and 155.3 for Marcus Serene. The next fight of the night, Pedro Carvalho and J.J. Wilson. Wilson, again, having troubles with the scale. It's a continual issue. He's going to have to move up to 155 if he can't make weight. He's off by 0.8 pounds here. Pedro Carvalho at the championship weight. He comes in under the 145 limit. I'm excited for this matchup. J.J. Wilson is going to be a really tricky test for Pedro Carvalho. Excellent jiu-jitsu skills. He is the same height, but does bring that reach advantage, three and a half inches. Carvalho is definitely the better striker of the two, but he can get hit. He closes distance too much, gets caught. You look at that fight between him and Patricio. Granted, Patricio is the best, but destroyed. Coming in way too close. Chin up high, getting caught. J.J. Wilson is not the striker that Pedro Patricio Pipo is, nor is he the striker that Pedro Carvalho is. But he's capable on the feet, and he could definitely land, but on the ground he shines. I believe he can give some serious issues here to Pedro Carvalho. Let me quickly pull up the image from the weigh-ins. We got the face-off here. Similar size for both men, both on weight. Intense stare down, they both want it. They both realize the stakes of this fight. I'm going to pick J.J. Wilson to win this one. I think he can get it off by a submission or a decision, but I don't like that he missed weight. At the minus 125, he's not a bad pickup. You can't hate on Pedro Carvalho either. He definitely has a chance here. I would say this is definitely one of the most close fights on this card. It really could go either way, but I do feel J.J. Wilson, the Maori kid, has the tools to beat Pedro Carvalho by a close decision. I'm going to ride Wilson to win this one, but it's not going to be my most confident pick of the night. And at minus 125, it would be a riskier bet, but the odds are not bad if you are willing to take the risk and throw down. 
The next fight of the night, the brother of Vadim Nemkov, Viktor Nemkov, takes on Karl Brexen. Karl Brexen actually defeated Vadim Nemkov some years ago, and now he takes on his brother. This is a very tricky matchup. Both men on weight. I'll be honest. Karl Brexen most definitely has a chance here, as does Viktor Nemkov. I picked a Brexen earlier in the week. I am going to stick with my pick. I do think he has the tools to do it, but I don't love the bet here. He's a very high-risk underdog pick. Viktor Nemkov most definitely could go out there and shut him down, but he has not... Um, you know, been superbly active. Granted, fought in the PFL with a draw in the recent bout, but it was a two-round fight. So, I mean, four fights in a row, he's not had a loss in. He takes on a Brexen, who's coming off a victory. He does have a recent loss to Phil Davis. Granted, had good moments in that fight. He does have good takedown defense, usually up until he starts fatiguing a bit. I'm going to pick Kara Brexen in a low-confidence underdog pickup here, and I do think he can do it by a TKO or a decision. Definitely leaning decision. I don't love the bet. On Victor Nemkov at the minus 180. Personally, if you want to bet the dog, bet the dog here. Don't go crazy or skip the bet. That is my opinion on this matchup. But I do believe Abrexin really has a, a legitimate shot to beat Victor Nemkov. And then he'll really set himself up well um, in this light heavyweight division if he does beat the brother of the champion. Next fight of the night, Raymond Daniels and Peter Staninik. This is going to be fireworks. Okay, the odds are saying plus 265 moderate underdog. I need to pull up best fight odds because that blows my mind. How is he the dog in this matchup? I feel like betting lines are all over the place for this fight. Let's see if we can find them here. Staninek is a plus 260 dog. Yeah, I don't know where those odds are coming from having Daniels as the dog, but I know some people that follow me have also hit me up and said they actually got Daniels at the plus money. If you can get Daniels plus money, throw it down because he's going to beat Peter Staninek here. Uh, Staninek at the minus 350 favorite. That's insane. Those are not the current odds. Maybe you can find those somewhere. From what I'm seeing, Daniels is more like a minus 250 favorite most of the time. I like Daniels to win this bout. He is 40 years of age, but he doesn't look it. He doesn't fight like it. He has the more high-level kickboxing experience. Granted, Staninek is an excellent kickboxer coming off a one night tournament championship victory he won three fights in a row all by knockout that night he's an impressive guy he's a hell of a striker hell of a fight here absolute fireworks probably chances that we have the best striking matchup of the night i mean these guys are both tremendous as far as the striking department goes still though very hard to pick against raymond daniels who's still the bellator kickboxing champion uh, hopefully we see some Bellator kickboxing events come back because I believe it's been a while since they did them. Let me quickly pull up the, the weigh-ins here. Daniel's in excellent shape, shredded out. Stanek looks good as well. Daniel's more versatile. You look back at that first fight. He won that first round. I believe he was en route to winning the fight. I'm going to pick Daniel's by a decision. Peter Stanek definitely game and does have the power to put him away. But I like Daniel's in this fight. I'm going to ride Raymond Daniel's to win this one. And if you can get him at plus money, throw the money down on him. If not, he's a good parlay pickup. The next fight of the night, another prelim bout, Gracik Bosnian versus Demarcus Jackson. Um, don't love this fight here, to be 100% honest, but I do feel there's some things to note about this matchup with Gracik. He, he's a pretty good striker and he is patient and his range management is good as well and he's difficult to take down. Austin Vanderford and him went the distance. It was a fairly competitive fight and, and Gracik does have... Some solid tools. Granted, Demarcus Jackson has some really good kickboxing as well. Um, very solid there. Power in that rear hook especially. And he also brings in good takedown defense and nice submission game as well. I'll be honest, especially at the plus 120, I like the Armenian um, in Gracic here. I do think he can beat Demarcus Jackson, especially with that height advantage, 6 foot to 5 8. Naturally bigger guy. I'm going to ride Gracic Bozian to win this one, but I don't love it. I, I would say... It's it's a decent underdog pickup. He does have a chance, but there's definitely a realistic possibility that Demarcus Jackson could win this as well. But I am going to ride Gracik Bosnian to beat Demarcus Jackson here in a fight that's interesting. I, I am excited to see it. Both guys on weight, 170 and 170 and a half here. I like the plus 120 dog, Gracik Bosnian, in a lower confidence underdog pickup, but definitely high poss or there's definitely possibility of profit with him. Steve Murray versus Sean Asher. This is going to be a good fight. I am very excited to see how Sean Asher deals with the freak in Steve Murray. Six foot eight. Doesn't have the world's longest reach for a, a guy that's six feet eight inches tall, but still being six foot eight is a huge advantage, especially against a guy that's more of a light heavyweight, Sean Asher. 
I don't think he's the Asher of old that, you know, was a light heavyweight, never really contender, but light heavyweight prospect, fought um, in LFA, had some good fights. I'm going to pick Steve Murray to win this fight by TKO under two rounds here. He's the minus 1,000 favorite to the plus 600 dog. I don't love a bet on this fight by any means. Both guys coming in at 247. I'll be honest, the 41-year-old most likely is getting TKO'd here. Steve Murray's got some pretty good kickboxing. He's well-rounded. He has been hurt before. But I think he beat Sean Asher here. The size difference is just going to be way too much to make up for. I don't think Asher will have the tools to do it. It would be very unlikely to see him go out there and knock out Steve Maury. I don't think it's going to happen. And I don't see him winning a decision. Steve Maury, TK over submission here. I like him. He's the minus 1,000. Maybe a parlay pickup. But definitely don't love the straight up bet at all for that matchup. Julia Budd, Diana Silva. I definitely feel there's a skill set difference here. Silva's a tough girl. She fought in the Contender Series. Has a good amount of pro experience. You know, 9-5. and five, You know, has 14 pro fights. Julia Budd has been excellent besides losing to Cyborg. I mean, she's had an amazing career outside of the UFC fighting in Bellator. She was a champion for a while. Now, looking to get back to that world title. It's going to be tricky. And it's not easy here in this matchup. But... I feel like the skill set difference, or rather I shouldn't say it's not easy here. No fight is ever easy, but I do feel they're giving her a very high possibility of success fight. Let's get the picture from the weigh-ins. Uh, not significant size difference, Bud, though, in excellent shape. And, I mean, Diana Silva doesn't look bad either. Both girls on weight for the 145-pound weight class here. I'm going to ride Julia Bud to get a unanimous decision win over Diana Silva here. I think she's just better everywhere, and I'm going with the more well-rounded fighter. But at minus 1,205, I don't love a bet. Maybe you put the money down in a parlay, but it's still not going to get you that good of plus money here. Because, man, those odds are very widespread. Um, I don't think a finish necessarily is a guarantee for Julia Budd here. She could get one, but I think unanimous decision, better overall, and, and puts on a decent performance. So we are going to ride Julia Budd in this matchup. Next fight of the night. Let's see if we can get it up momentarily here. And this is going to be a really good one in the light heavyweight division. It's... Pretty much the prelim main event for Bellator here. Julius Angalikas versus Gregory Milliard, the cousin of Jarzinho Rosenstreich. Not a ton of footage on Gregory, Gregory Milliard, but we've seen a lot from Julius Angalikas. He has excellent takedown defense, beat Alex Polizzi, who was a hot prospect in his last fight. Really nasty one. Two down the line. He's a scary Lithuanian fighter, and I believe he's got the skill set to be top line in the Bellator light heavyweight division. Maybe not number one, but definitely does have top skill set. It's going to take a very good guy to beat him. I do not believe Gregory Milliard being four inches shorter, also at a significant five-inch reach disadvantage, is going to be the guy. I think Julius Angelicas by a dominant unanimous decision or a TKO is definitely possible here. He's a minus 1,000. Huge favorite in this matchup. I think he's a guy that you throw on the parlay, but I don't necessarily think that he's a guy that you would bet straight up on. Both guys making weight. It's good to see. I feel like it's a pretty one-sided matchup between these two. So I'm going to ride Julius Angelicas putting on a dominant performance over Gregory Milliard in this matchup. And definitely establishing himself as somebody to keep an eye on in the Bellator light heavyweight division. Now, first fight of this main card, Vida Ortega and Desiree Yanez. Yanez coming off a bad controversial loss over in Combate. She's got very good grappling skills. She is... At 125 for this fight. I believe her last fight was at 115. Vida Ortega, experienced girl. I like the odds of seeing Desiree Yanez win. It's a pick'em's minus 110. I feel like Yanez, a lot of cage control. Probably going to grind out a decision over Vida Ortega. Might not be the most entertaining fight you ever see. But Desiree Yanez should be the one winning it. Vida Ortega, not the most athletic girl. Can be controlled. Granted, doesn't have a bad skill set. It is capable. But Desiree Yanez is the pick here. I like her at the minus 110. Uh, definitely an exciting, fairly exciting matchup in this women's flyweight division because Desiree Yana is definitely a girl coming in. The bit of momentum, you know, even a controversial loss, she very well could have been the combate champion if not for that bad decision in that fight. Minus 110, even odds. I like a Desiree Yanez pick here. Uh, I think there's a pretty decent chance that she does actually pull this one out. Now, the next fight of the night, Paul Daly and Sabah Homasi. This is the fight of fights here. This is the matchup. A lot of people are going to be wanting to see. I feel like on the main card, this is one of the most fun bouts. It's a catchweight 175 matchup. I know Paul Daly is not able to 
make the weight from from what I've heard. He's having some issues getting down to 170 pounds nowadays. Um, so makes sense that they're going to do this a little bit safer for him. I feel like doesn't bring in the risk factor. Uh, you know, if maybe potentially he were to have issues on the scale and then doesn't perform well because he is saying he'll probably retire if this is going to be what he's going to have to do, uh, which is 170. So if one, 175, he's open to fighting at, but not 170. Look at the face off there. Sabah Masi, a taller guy. Davis, the or rather Daly, the longer guy of the two, brings a ton of punching power to the game. I'm calling first round knockout for Paul Daly here. He's a minus 190 favorite to Sabah Masi, the plus 160 dog. 175 odds, or rather 175 weights, odds plus 160 for Sabah. I don't think he has much of a chance here. I feel like the sleek chic is going to get put to sleep by Paul Semtex daily. That left hook will probably be the one to do it because I know Sabah Homasi is going to be down for a hell of a striking match. And I think it's going to be an absolute barn burner of about. All right, let's get to the next fight of the night. Corey Anderson versus Dovletsan Yeg Sheramadov. A lot of people don't know Yeg Sheramadov. I didn't know of him until I heard of him getting called up to Bellator. I started doing some film study on this guy. I started checking him out and I said, man, this guy might have the skill set that gives Corey Anderson trouble. A guy that has punching power and good wrestling defense. He's a combat sambo vet. This picture is so low quality, so I really do apologize for that. Um, but it, as you can see, I mean, I'll pull it up again. It's just such a bad picture. I don't look at like looking at it, but not significant size difference here between these two, even though Corey's supposed to have a four inch height advantage. It looks like it's more like inch or two. I like Dovletan Yagchiramarov. If it gets past the first round, definitely start leaning Corey, especially in a five round fight, which I believe this fight is right. It's five round tournament fight. So they're, they're going to be doing five rounds. I like uh, Dovletan Yagchiramarov. Watch out for the way he sets up. The overhand will throw a jab out there that's not really going to be to land, but rather to throw the opponents off and throws a huge overhand. I feel like he can sleep Corey. Questionable chin Corey Anderson is always in danger with big punchers, and Dovlitsan Yegshiromanov is that guy. If he can stay off his back, he's going to knock out Corey Anderson. I'm going to ride him to win by a knockout here. He's a plus 140 dog. He is truly the dog of the week, in my opinion, and I do think he has a pretty good shot of doing this. I am calling knockout win for Dovletsan over Corey Anderson. Both guys on weight. Should be an exciting matchup here in the light heavyweight division, the co-main event of the evening. We're at the main event. If you haven't yet, make sure you guys subscribe and smash that like button. Let's get into this main event. Vadim Nemkov, Phil Davis, they run it back. This is years in the making I'm excited to see it. It hasn't been, I guess, that many years. I believe 2018 was the last time these two fought. Mr. Wonderful Phil Davis versus Vadim Nemkov. Vadim is a killer. He's gotten so much better over the years. You saw the beating he put on Ryan Bader. His kickboxing is phenomenal. His wrestling defense is very good. But Phil Davis gave him the most stern test of his career. Nearly submitted him in that third round with the Kimura twice. He has the reach advantage and height advantage of two inches. That being the challenger, Phil Davis. He's a plus 165 underdog. He is eight years the senior of Vadim. So who has improved more in those past couple years? To me, it's got to be Vadim Nemkov. He's been getting better and better. He beat... Davis a couple years ago, I believe he beats him again, and I think he will be the first man to stop Phil Davis. I am predicting fourth round KO for Vadim Nemkov over Phil Davis. I totally acknowledge this fight could go the distance, but I still think Nemkov will definitely be the guy winning. But I do have a feeling that we're going to see a knockout. Let's quickly pull up the weigh-in image here. Look at these two, both in incredible shape. The world champion with his belt, Scott Coker in the center. Phil Davis, always in great shape, as is Vadim. This is going to be a very fun matchup. I like Vadim Nemkov, the champion. He's going to defend here. I believe he beats Phil Davis and then moves on to fight either Yoel Romero or Anthony Rumble Johnson, which will absolutely solidify his claim as being one of the best light heavyweights on the planet. Excellent main event. Overall is a pretty fun card. I am looking forward to seeing a ton of matchups here. I hope you guys enjoyed this full card prediction, weigh-in recap, and betting preview video. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. I will be covering this Bellator event live. So if you're interested in the play-by-play, -play, you guys know I'm the guy to come to. I appreciate you all so much. And I will see you all in the next video.